gather round people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown And accept that it's soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving Then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are changing Come writers and critics who prophesize with your pen And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon, for the wheel's still in spin And there's no telling who that it's naming Cause the loser now will be later to win For the times they are a-changing Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out The Times They Are A-Changing by Bob Dylan, probably one of the greatest protest songs ever written, probably as relevant now as it was then. Uh, interesting thing about this song is that it varies a lot. In the kind of the folk tradition, the, the structure isn't quite a set. It's much more about telling the story of the song than it is about the form of the song, the order of the chords. So what I'm going to try and take you through is kind of a generalized version. I'll point out some of the discrepancies there. But what I'm also going to have over on the website in the tab section is going to be an exact listing of the chords that happen, particularly in the harmonica breaks. The chords are completely different every Every time there's no kind of pattern to it at all uh, so the way I generally try and think of these things is this is the songs in three eight or like or maybe three four one two three one two three to keep it nice and simple as I describe the form to you I'm just gonna strum once for each bar but know that it's in three there'll be three strums to the bar plus a few upstrokes later on we'll talk about the rhythm a little later on in the in the lesson but let's get the form out of the way first let's get to a close-up so the intro is three bars of G. Uh, maybe I should point out here that uh, the G chord I'm using is the folk G. Uh, third finger, third fret, thicker string, muting the fifth string. Three open strings, little finger down, third fret on the thinner string. It's just easier, particularly for the changes to C. You can see there's hardly any movement. If I'm doing this G, there's a lot more movement with the hand. It's considerably harder, so definitely recommend you get into using that G there. You need to note that the first word of the chorus is actually coming on beat three of the bar, last bar of the intro. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Come gather round people. Okay, so I'm gonna take it stanza by stanza. The first one, G, E minor, C, and then two bars of G. So we're already off to a funny start there with a five bar pattern on that first stanza. It's more, much more common to have uh, groups of four bars rather than five. But uh, so, come G chord round E minor to see the two G, the extra G, the second stanza. G do the E minor to see that to D. Much more common regular group of four there. So we've got G, E minor, C, G, G then G, E minor, C, D. Okay, next uh, stanza. We're on G that the E minor is C to the G. And the G. And now this time round, we've got the same sort of idea that we had at the beginning, but we've now got three bars of G before we come into the next stanza. Okay, so it stays on that G a long time. It's one bar longer in the first verse than it is in all of the other verses. So just the very first time, if you want to be super authentic, you've got those three bars of Gs. If you don't want to do it that way, if you want to do some sort of consistency, then you just do G, two Gs there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start from the very beginning again to make sure you've got this form. It's definitely the kind of thing that you might want to write down. Um, so the first stanza, so G to E minor to C to bars of G. Second one, and G to E minor to C then to D third. And then G to E minor, you'll be C to the G two, three. If you G to A minus to D chord, then you better start swimming, you'll be sinking like a stone. So after that third stanza, we got this G to A minor to D, D. 
Now there's a really nice little chord movement that some of you might not be familiar with. It's moving the bass note down basically. So you got D to with a C bass to a B bass to an A bass. So the bass is going do do do. You better start swimming or you'll sink like stone. Now it's commonly written out that this is the D with the C bass. This chord. It's really hard to tell what's going on on the record. It's not very clear. A true D with a C bass would be that, but you can play the open string any, anyway. I feel like this C add 9 seems to work better, and it seems to be what most people play. So they play D, C add 9. So just leaving third finger down. 3, 2, O, oh, 3, O. Oh. Then first finger moves back to the second fret. All of the, the, leaving the third finger down, the rest open. So nothing, two open, open, three open. Then to a regular D, but with that A bass note. So D, C add nine, G with a B bass to D. But you could also, perhaps more authentically, do that. I don't think that's on the record. I'm sure it's G with a B bass on the record. Back to D. So you better start swimming, you you sink like a stone. For the times they are a changing. Now that last line in the very first verse, he just plays G, G to D to G. Now I've just noticed there that I've switched to this other type of G chord. It doesn't really matter which one you're going to use. To be completely honest, it. it really whether it's that G or that G or that G or it, it, any of the G's is going to work when you've got a lot of D's to G's it can be useful to hold that third finger down makes the change again nice and smooth but you don't have to do it if you want a regular D to that folk G is should be just as easy really it's completely up to you so that's it for the first verse. I'm going to play it through all of the way through now with the right number of bars on each chord. Uh, might be worth not making a little note of that. Or again, you might want to go and check out uh, Just the Guitar tabs if you go to the, this particular song and click on the tabs uh, thing. It's an additional paid for service. It's not free tabs because we do pay the right royalties and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, let's go through the verse. So, come G chord to E minor to C chord to G for two bars. And G chord E minor to C chord to D And G chord it E minor You'll be C to the G Two, three If your G to A minor is D chord Then your D with a C bass To a B bass to an A bass For the G G are D to G and then we're through into the harmonica solo now um, I've got to be honest I'm not a huge fan of Bob Dylan's harmonica play I much prefer like Neil Young's kind of more melodic thing uh, and it all feels a little bit random for me with not all Bob Dylan but particularly this song the chord progression is different every time and I just yeah I don't find it a particularly melodic part of the song but there's definitely a lot of passion in it and it's powerful and I'm, I'm not trying to diss the the whole song it's just Maybe not my favorite bit of it. Uh, so uh, the harmonica solo, the first one is G, E minor, C, G for four bars. But it is absolutely different each time. The second harmonica is G, E minor, C, G, G, D, C, G with a B bass, D, 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 D. The third one is G, D, C, D, G, G. The fourth one is G, E minor, C, G, G, D. C, B, uh, uh, G with a B bass, A with a uh, D with an A bass, D, G, uh, C, D, G, G, G. It's just so haphazard. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to do that. I'd, I'd work out a pattern of things that you're going to play if you want to do the harmonica thing. But it does give you a bit of freedom to just experiment and play kind of whatever you want as well. Um, now, the important changes that happen for the second verse and most of the subsequent verses, but not all, uh, the first one is in that third stanza where there was, I said to you, there were those three G's at the end of the line. All of the other verses just have two at that point. So it's definitely worth being aware of that particular one. Um, and also the last line. The times they are a 
change it. All of the other verses have G to C to D to G for that key line. It's just the first verse where it's G, G, D, uh, and then back to G again. So be aware of that. Uh, like I said, I'll put uh, some additional notes and exactly the form up uh, over on the website because when you see them like one after the other, it's a little bit easier to uh, to get together. Um, let me just take you through verse two though, so that you're you're very clear of that. Um, verse two is is kind of odd because the last G is where the harmonic of solo chord progression starts, so that's a little bit odd as well. But like I said, it's it's much more about the energy and the feeling of the song than it is these decisions as to whether you stay on a chord an extra bar or whatever in in this particular song doesn't really matter well it doesn't really matter if you're playing it on your own if you're playing it with someone else it matters a lot because you need to be playing together so it becomes a little bit more challenging if you're playing it in a band you have to have an arrangement you have to decide what the chords are going to be so verse two will be come g chord to e minor to c going to g to G, to Y, E minor, to C, then to D, then G to E minor, the C going to G, and there's G telling A minor, it's D chord, cause the D to the C bass, to the B bass, to the A, for the G they C to D. G. Now let's talk a little bit more about the strumming as well. It's in three. The most common kind of vibe for the song is just playing three down strums. So going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But of course, for every down strum, there's an up. So you could have one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. It's a little bit too busy. What you'll notice is it changes up during the song, and I, I haven't been able to find any particular pattern to that. Uh, you can hear it very clearly in the intro where he's going like a one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the song starts. So he's definitely mixing it up, but it's kind of up to you a little bit. I'm trying to think of it more in the one, two, three, 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 one, two, and three, and 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 one, two, one, two, three, one. But really what I'm thinking about is the one, two, three, one, two, three. I, just, I can't help doing it. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down is what I end up doing. I'm trying to think just of the three. That's what I was trying to show you. Just having the one, two, three, one, two, three, but one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. And, and if sometimes you put in an extra strum or you leave one out, it's totally fine. Most important thing is just keeping that feeling. The one, two, three, 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 one. So that's, that's really feeling that pulse really strongly is the key thing. When you're learning a song like this, I definitely recommend trying to do just the, the single strums works to help you keep in time and you get the chords in the right place with the lyrics if you practice and then if you keep going you start to feel the rhythm if you get it right and you won't think about it because the rhythm will come if you don't concentrate but your hand keeps on moving the same time consistently got to get that feeling just keeping the hand moving is the key thing for getting the rhythm right with this song and every other song that you learn with a few exceptions which are so rare that i wouldn't worry about it so general rule keeping the hand moving nice and consistent keep it simple when you start make sure you get used to the form and you know where the chord changes change relative to the lyric uh if you're doing the singing and playing at the same time and you're struggling with it i just did a lesson on that with a little 10-step program on how to work on the guitar parts and working at getting them independent and then how to work on lyrics and then putting them together how to do it so if you're struggling with that aspect of it you might want to go and check out that lesson as well the hundreds more songs over on the website all graded by difficulty so you can find songs that fit your level and the style that you like and all of that sort of stuff really hope you're enjoying this song and all of the other ones i'll see you for plenty more very soon have yourselves a fantastic day bye bye